Well, it's day 60 of the carnivore diet. I'm out running estimates today. We we had a lot of storm work and um, we've been running crazy with estimates for that. And we got standard calls here that now I gotta clean up. So uh, yeah, I'll be running around today, but day 60 of the carnivore diet. And you know, it seems like just yesterday that I started, but you know, this is what I'm calling a lifestyle diet. This is not a weight loss diet. If, if you're doing the carnivore or keto for weight loss only, uh, that might not be a big enough why. Because you'll lose your weight and then you'll think, oh, now I can eat again. And that's just like every other diet in the world where you go back to your old habits and you know, you just quickly go back to where you were. And, you know, this is a lifestyle diet. I am I am seriously considering staying on carnivore for ever and eternity. Uh, now, I may, I may revert to keto, you know, because there's, there's all things that I like um, and that I want to participate in. But I'm gonna do that probably cautiously because what, what really fits me on this diet is the, the lack of tracking. I don't have to think about anything. I just eat till I'm comfortably stuffed on all things animal products and I don't have to worry about anything else. I don't have to count carbs. I don't have to count, you know, 20 grams of carbs a day. I don't have to worry about anything. And so this really fits my personality because I'm not a very good tracker. I'm not a very good regimen person. I just do what I do and I do it passionately. And so I love the fact that I don't have to portion control anything. I just eat. And, and I eat voraciously when I eat. And then what's kind of cool, I was fasting every other week before. Now, fasting is so easy under this diet that I just fast every Thursday. No, 24-hour fast every Thursday. And it works out perfect. In fact, today, day 60 of the carnivore diet is a fasting day. And so I ate last night and I ate, you know, a couple of burgers and a 12 ounce ribeye and some eggs. And I was comfortably stuffed. And I don't even have a hunger signal yet. I'm sure I will today uh, along the way. But uh, a 24 hour fast really isn't that hard. Whereas when I was in the carb world, I was hangry when I was fasting. You know, I'm supposed to, you know, fasting is supposed to be like improve your attitude kind of thing. <laughs> but under a carb diet, it's, it's a horrible thing. You're just, you're craving all day long. And I don't crave under this, I, if I crave it all, I, I just have some water and it, it's just fine. Or some salt, I'll throw some salt down and that'll just like throw away the hunger uh, pains. So, uh, very good this way. So, 60 days, so what have I learned? I, I just had a good friend of mine, Jacob Rogers, uh, he runs the Guilty of Treason uh, brand on YouTube. And we went to Guatemala last year together and, and he's been out here and, and spent a week with us working with Ham's Arbor Care. And so two weeks in, in a remote jungle, you know, with a guy uh, and you, you tend to get close. <laughs> so uh, the joke is he's my surrogate son um, and my second son because Taylor's my first son. So at any rate, he called me up last night and I, I saw the call. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. It's Jacob. 
So he's two days in, now this is day, day three of the carnivore diet. So apparently I am now an influencer of the influencers. <laughs> Cause he's, he's got a lot more followers than I have. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can look him up on YouTube, Game of Trees, or uh, excuse me, Guilty of Treason with T-R-E-E-S-O-N and the same name on Instagram, Guilty of Treason. I think he's on TikTok too. I don't do TikTok, so at any rate. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's day three now and, and he was just asking questions and, and, oh, what do you do to start out? Well, the two biggest things, when you, you're going to a, a ketogenic diet, right because it it's it's really a state of metabolism that you're shooting for you're in a ketogenic state where your body is burning fat as energy when you're eating carbs your body will immediately go first to the carbs for energy but then the the caveat with that is that any extra carbs go to the liver and get turned to fat and they get stored. So if you're trying to lose weight on a traditional diet and you're eating a lot of carbs, your body's making fat and storing it while you're, you're trying to, quote, burn fat. Well, you don't burn much fat when your body's making it. And in fact, you don't burn any. You just have this crazy cycle going on. And so the calories in, calories out is a failed model. It was wrong from the beginning. It, it's a matter of you know, creating a metabolism where your body burns the fat. And so you know, I get energy from fat. So I'm on a fast today and uh, I... Uh, I drank coffee this morning and I put, you know, a couple tablespoons of butter in my coffee and, you know, a little bit of, of cream. Uh, and so I got energy from that coffee because the fat is immediate energy. And so uh, there's kind of ways to to cheat and technically because my body's in a state of ketosis 24 7 most people who do intermittent fasting they're trying to get you know the the long-term fasting people are going 48 hours 60 hours you know these extended fasts what they're trying to accomplish is getting into the key you know into a state of ketosis and there's benefits to that that state. Well, I'm in a constant state of ketosis, uh, but I'm eating usually. And so my fasting days, excuse me, got something in my eye. On my fasting days, I, my body isn't changing. Like it's just going to start burning fat that's on my body still. And so I'm not going to have these extreme hunger signals all day long because my body says okay well he didn't feed me anything today except a little bit of butter and a little bit of cream I guess I'm just gonna pull from my reserves and so my body's actually gonna burn fat I'm not exercising I'm not doing anything strenuous and I'm gonna lose you know a pound today or maybe two pounds today because it's going to take energy from my body that's currently stored and I, I still have some subcutaneous fat left uh, some some slight little love handles and a little bit of a little bit of paunch in front but you can start to see my my six pack is becoming quite defined and so you know these fasting days are really quite simple now when I get down to a pretty low percentage of body fat still uh, I'll have I'll have something to burn and who knows you know I mean I, I'm not your typical person 
that got on this ketogenic diet because they had 200 pounds to lose. I mean, most people looking at me two months ago would say, man, he's super fit for 58. You know, I climb trees, I can footlock a rope, I can, I can do things that your average 58 year old person can't do. And so I didn't look obese, but I was 25 pounds overweight. You know, I just carried it all over my body. And who knows, my liver might have been slightly fatty. You know, you've got the skinny fat people, fat on the inside, thin on the outside. Uh, and, or thin on the outside, fat on the inside, tofo, tof, tofi, or whatever. Um, yeah, and so maybe I had a, a little bit of a fatty liver. I had some symptoms of you know, pre but diabetic uh, issues. Uh, I didn't know I had those symptoms. Now that I've educated myself, I, I now know I had some symptoms. And, you know, you just have to do this to achieve a metabolic state and metabolic health. That's your, that's your main why. Now, Jacob, uh, he's a tree climber too. You know, and he and he and he's doing YouTube, and uh, you know, my my why is probably similar to what he's going to create as a why, and that is I I want to continue to to climb and and produce content, you know, till I'm in my seventies, you know, because my brand, my Game of Trees brand, and my personality brand the Kevin Ham, the master arborist, is only going to get stronger as I age. You know, I'm kind of the old guy on Instagram now. Uh, what am I going to be when I'm 70? You know, and I'm still climbing. You know that that could be an inspiration to people, and that that could be motivating. And you know, I exist to set people free to a more abundant life. That's why I exist. I just happen to be an arborist. So it fits my my big why. Like I want to bring an abundant lifestyle to people. I want to, you know, physically, spiritually, economically, you know, in all facets, I exist to set people free to a more abundant life. So by staying metabolically healthy and living that example, I can bring that abundance to people. And I can be an inspiration to, to be able to remain active. You know, one of the benefits I've seen from this is, you know, I used to be kind of a, I'd look at people that were gluten-free, you know, I'm like, yeah, they're like wannabe celiacs. You know, they really aren't uh, allergic to you, gluten, but they just wanna be. And I, I would kind of mock it. And, you know, now I'm finding out that I had inflammation that was probably from gluten, and I didn't know it. I was becoming a, a sourdough master, and my family members still demand me to make it, which I do, but I kind of feel a little guilty now making it because it's like it's processed grains. Even though uh, I make it with some whole grains, it's, it's really not whole grain. Whole grain is whole grain. Like it's not ground up. Like you're chewing the grain. You know, when you chew it, you're not grinding it like you do in a grinder. So when you see something that says whole grain, it just means, yeah, they might have ground up the whole grain, but it's highly processed. It's the fiber in that ground up whole grain isn't doing the job that fiber does when you just chew it. And, and so it's really not that good for you. <laughs> Even though they say, oh, fermented sourdough is better for you than, than regular sourdough. It might be, you know? And, and in, in moderation, you know, maybe, maybe it, it's fine for somebody that is of a metabolic state that they can handle a little bit of gluten. I don't know that I'll ever put any gluten back in my lifestyle, or maybe, maybe I'll have a, you know, a small, little, less than 20 grams uh, someday I want a little a little piece of, of sourdough bread or something uh, but
But now I, I've realized that gluten was a major aspect of my inf inflammation. And my, my hands, I, you, if you've listened to some of my videos, my thumbs are kind of arthritic. And my, my middle fingers are, I can't close them all the way. Uh, the, the joints are kind of jammed up. And you know, my mom would say, oh, it's because you cracked your knuckles all your life. No, it's because it's I ate stuff that inflamed them. And now they're getting better. Like I can literally feel my hands getting better. And, and that's a very noticeable sign for me. Uh, you know, for, for people that, that suffer from other things, like, uh, you know, ED, you know, now they're saying ED is, is probably a sign of insulin resistance. And, and what are we doing with it? Well, we're taking some blue pill to, to make it better when you really don't have to. You just get yourself in a state of ketosis and and you eat a lot of good red meat and you'll have all the testosterone you need you know it's amazing so uh, so many things are dependent upon good metabolic health and that's what I'm finding this diet to be is it, it just raises the bar on all levels and now one thing I'm looking forward to is my doctor appointment at the end of August, August 29th. And my, my doctor is kind of a traditional doctor. Uh, you know, she says, well, I have patients that are on a keto diet and, you know, I work with them, but you know, she'll, she'll put them on statins if they have a high cholesterol, you know, she's still that traditional. And you know, now with the, the study that I've done, you know, cholesterol isn't the bad guy. It never was. It was at the scene of the fire because it was a fireman. There was inflammation in the arteries and the cholesterol went there to fix the inflammation. Take away the inflammation from the fructose and the cholesterol issue goes away. Uh, and so, I've become a real student of all the metabolic labs. So, you know, you're watching a number of, of factors. You've got, uh, you know, your, your blood pressure, of course, is a major one. My blood pressure has always been fine. Um, you've got your glucose level. So, uh, now my doctor won't even test my fasting insulin. Well, we have the fasting glucose. Yeah, well, what if it's taking like a ton of insulin to keep my glucose normal? So I have a normal glucose, but it's taking extraordinary amounts of extra insulin to keep it there. Well, if you're not looking at your fast, fasting insulin, you don't even realize it. And then you've got your your HDL, which is supposed to be higher than the, the good cholesterol. Okay, well, let me ask you, you know, like I'm a creationist, right? So do you think God made something that that was bad like so your your LDL is the bad cholesterol do you know how many good things LDL cholesterol does I mean it it, it fights inflammation okay that's why it's in the arteries uh, in in the plaque in the arteries because it was there trying to fix the inflammation that the sugar caused it uh, it it creates sex hormones so testosterone, like LDL is what builds that. So everybody's on a statin and then everybody's claiming low T. So they're on a statin and then they have to be on hormone therapy because the statin is bringing down their hormones. Well, get off the statin and let your LDL rise and you'll, you'll have all the hormone you need. Uh, LDL is produced by the brain and it's tied to memory. So all the Alzheimer's patients, maybe maybe the low LDL from the statin they're on is causing them to be, you know, memory loss issues, causing them to have memory loss issues. Uh, so LDL does a lot of good things in the body. It's not a bad lipid, it's a good lipid. And mine is gonna be higher. And it's going to be high enough, probably, that my doctor is going to say, you should be on a statin. Because 
all the metabolic measurements are going to be good, except LDL is going to be high. All right. I heard this analogy. I forget the doctor's name. Uh, he's a, um, yeah, it was on an interview a few days ago that I watched. Great analogy. The, the worst metabolic state is a type 1 diabetic. Okay, my daughter is a type 1 diabetic, so I, I have some knowledge about type 1 diabetics. And, and a type 1 diabetic that's unregulated is going to have extremely low HDL. It's going to have extremely high triglycerides and their blood pressure is going to be through the roof. Their glucose is going to be through the roof. And what do you think their LDL is? Would it surprise you that the LDL would be low? It would be what your typical doctor would say would be really good. Well, if they're in a metabolic state where everything is out of order, they're an unregulated type 1 diabetic, and everything's out of order and their LDL is low. I mean, wouldn't you think possibly just maybe a low LDL is out of order? If if what their body's doing is making everything out of order and the LDL happens to be low, maybe our whole paradigm about a low LDL is wrong. Because you take somebody who's on a ketogenic diet and all of their metabolic signs are going to be exactly opposite of the unregulated diabetic, type 1 diabetic. And so, I mean, intuitively, that tells me a high LDL is a good thing. And there are, there are studies that show elderly people with a high LDL actually have a longer or a, a, a better death rate. You know, they're, they're staying alive longer than counterparts with a low uh, LDL. So the whole cholesterol argument is skewed, I believe. And for me, because it's my body, my choice, right? I'm not, I'm not going to go on a statin if my LDL is high. If all my other metabolic signs are, are low, and, and one really good thing on your lipid panel to look at is the ratio of your HDL cholesterol to your triglycerides. And if that is a one-to-one -one or better ratio, your, your LDL is probably mostly the large, fluffy-sized LDL. And they're small, oxidized LDLs. Uh, and, and those are, are usually the ones that are doing the bad things in the veins uh, or getting stuck in the veins. And, and so if you're mostly big, buoyant LDL molecules, it, it, your LDL number is really irrelevant. And so even though I may not get a fasting insulin this time around. I'm, I'm probably going to find some place where I can get a fasting insulin. But I'm looking forward to educating my doctor. You know, I, I'm probably not going to fire her because I, I kind of relish conflict once in a while. And, and I, I want to, I want to bring abundance to her life. Like, I'm going to be a patient that normally might fire her, right? And I'm not going to fire her. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to stay around and give her a living example of someone that keeps their health with a high LDL. You know, I'm going to break her paradigm. And that's going to be fun, you know? And in the end, because even doctors like Dr. Barry, Dr. Ken Barry, who's one of the biggest spokespersons for the carnivore diet, he, he was staunchly the other way before. 
And he says, yeah, I, I was that guy, you know, passing out statins. And he, he himself had a big metabolic issue that ultimately converted him. But, you know, these are just things that I've learned in these first 60 days. I've been a voracious student uh, listening to everything I could listen to. And I'll, I'll keep that. I'm kind of a cyclic person, so I try to really leverage my motivations as they're there. So I still have a high motivation to keep learning. Uh, and and I'll, I'm going to keep doing so for as long as that motivation runs. And, and make this a lifestyle diet. And uh, so, uh, I'm, and I'm going to keep reporting it here. So this this ended up being a pretty long video, but hopefully I've given some. So a couple key tips to people that are thinking of starting this out. So Jacob, you know you're going to want to get your LMNT or your your Redmond's uh, electrolytes and put a packet of that in 32 ounces of water and drink that every day. And I put a couple drops of iodine uh, in that water as well. And I have the unflavored LMNT uh, electrolytes because I, I don't like the artificial sweeteners that can keep your cravings for sweet high. So I've eliminated that. I don't have any sweet cravings whatsoever. And so that's very beneficial to me. And, uh, and so, you got to have those electrolytes iodine you got to have iodine so that's a supplement i take but just two drops a day and then uh i do take a liver supplement like desiccated liver uh some people you can get you can get desiccated organs like a variety of organs that are all desiccated and of course you can eat liver once a week you know but i'm not a big liver fan you know and and so you know that's a supplement i'm willing to to buy and uh, occasionally I'll eat liver. Uh, eating fish, you know, once or twice a week is a good idea for the, your omega-3s. I do take an omega-3 supplement just to make sure I, I've got it because I don't gravitate to fish. So it's something I have to think about doing. So I take the supplement just as I'm taking the liver supplement, I'll take some, some omega-3, some fish oil uh, to make sure I get that. And vitamin D I take uh, I know I haven't totally changed my mind about the sun yet. You know, I had skin skin cancer, but sugar is is making your skin susceptible to the sun, cancer. Uh, that's one of the theories, and that you can get your vitamin D from the sun. And if you have healthy skin, you're not going to automatically get skin cancer. Because why is skin cancer most prevalent in the United States? Because we're all eating this sad diet, this standard American diet. And uh, I had I had a yeast infection, varicolor fungus on my back, and and it's going away. Like for a couple of years, I've been trying to get rid of this thing, trying to put Selsun Blue on my back, you know, and and kill this fungus. Uh, it's just it's just kind of blotchy, like red blotchy. It's not like fungus growing on my back, but you know, you can tell you know something's different with the skin, and it's not like psoriasis or anything. But people are having their psoriasis go away too. Like a lot of these skin issues are inflammation from what you're eating. They're inflammation from the carbs, and they go away when you're on a long-term ketogenic diet. And what's kind of funny, some researchers, they, they said, well, you, your, your diet, you can't research the diet because it fixes too many things at once. You can't find a mechanism to, to write a prescription for <laughs> because it fixes too many things. Well, for me personally, if I've got something that will fix many things in my body, I'm going to do that thing. I don't care what the researchers want to see. I don't care what drug they want to create uh, because any drug, if it affects a mechanism, it doesn't just affect that mechanism. If it affects the whole chain 
reaction of mechanisms connected to that mechanism. And so I want to be, have no draw. I, I'm on no medication right at the moment. And I never have been. Uh, but now all of the inflammation that I had, I can tell it's going away. And so the chances of me getting on medication are going to be greatly reduced. And uh, what's going to be fun, I, in September, I compete in the Wisconsin Tree Climbing Championship. And doggone, I'm, I'm going to be in pretty good shape when that arrives. So it's going to be fun. This is day 60. I'm at 30 minutes. I'm going to let you go. This is a Game of Trees. We're having fun on the carnivore diet. See you next time. Like and subscribe to my new to this channel. This is my personal channel, and that's where I'm going to document all this. Take care.